Hey guys, I'm Gamer Mate. Welcome back to a new video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a variant voting system. So, let's go into a video. Okay, so over in Replicate Storage, if you open it, we have two folders. One called Remote Events, and then one called Vote Values. Inside Remote Events 1, we have two Remote Events. One called Add Vote Event, and then one called Toggle Vote Event. Then, in the Vote Values folder, we have two number values. One called Option 1, and then one called Option 2. And both of their values have been set to 0. Then, over in Static GUI, we have a Screen GUI called Vote GUI. Inside that, we have a Frame. Here we go. So inside of that, we have two scripts, and we'll go over those in a bit. So first off, we have a button called Option 1, which is this Vote Option 1. Inside of that, we have a text label called Vote Count, which is this number here. And then the same for Option 2. So this one also has a Vote Count inside of it. Then we also have a text label called Title, and that's just this text up top. And then it was a script service, we have a serve script called main script and then one called vote server but we'll get into that in a minute so for our first local script it's called toggle gui inside of it we have a script so if you want you can just pause it to write it all out so at the top we have a variable called toggle vote event and this equals to a game dot replicate storage then dot remote events which is that folder in replicate storage then dot toggle vote event, which is the actual remote event. This remote event is going to toggle the GUI on and off, so if you can see it or not. Then we have a variable for a frame, which just equals to the script's parent. Then down here, on the toggle vote event, we use the on client event to know when the remote event has been fired to all the clients. Then in between brackets, we have something called value. And this is going to either equals to true or false, because we're going to send either true or false from the server script, where we fire the remote event to all the clients. So down here, we check in if the value equals to true, and if it does, we we'll set the frame's visible property to true, so we can actually see it. Then down here, else if the value equals to false, we we'll set the frame's visible property to false, so we cannot see it. So that's it for the first script, if we close it off. Then for the second local script, called vote client, we have a script here, I'll zoom out so you can see it. So up top we have a few variables. The first one is called add vote event, and this equals to a game, dot replicate storage, dot remote events, which is that folder, then dot add vote event, which is the actual remote event. So we're gonna be firing this remote event to a server, so we know that we've actually voted. And then we'll be actually able to like add plus one to the vote value. Then we have a variable called has voted. And this equals to false. So we're going to be using this to know if the player has already voted or not. Then we have a variable called button1. And this equals to scripts parent, which is a frame. And then dot option1. Then we have the same for option2. Which equals to scripts parent, which is a frame. Then option2, which once again is that button. Then we have two more variables called option1 and option2. And both of these equal to the game dot replicate storage dot vote values which is that folder then option 1 and option 2 which are those values but if you scroll down so down here we make the function called vote and in brackets we have button comma option so when we're going to be calling this function we're going to be sending in information so we know what both of these are like what button is and what option is go we'll check in if we haven't already voted. So check in if has voted equals to false. And if it is, then we set it to true. Then we set the button's background colour to equal to colour 3 dot from RGB, which is red, green or blue. Then in the brackets, we have this colour code here. And you can see it equals to this like dark blue. So once we vote, we're going to be setting the background colour of the button to this dark blue. And you don't need to have this line if you don't want, but I'm going to keep it. Then under that, we're firing the add vote event to the server, 
with option, which is this up here. Then under that, so we're using the mouse button one click event on both of the buttons, so we know when you clicked it. Then we're calling the function, the vote function, with the button and then the option. Then we do the same thing for button two, but this time we change this to a number two. Then underneath that, we're using the changed event on the option one to know once the property of the option one has been changed. So once the value has been changed, we're going to be changing that vote count. So the vote count is text to equal to the option one value. So we're doing the exact same thing, but for option two instead. So yeah, if you want, you can just pause the video to write it all out. Then we close off that script. Okay, now in the server script service, we have two scripts. Let's go to the vote server. So like usual, we have a few variables up top. One called add vote event, which once again equals to the game dot replicate storage dot remote events dot add vote event, and we're getting this to know once that a player has voted, so once it's been fired to the server. Then once again we have the variables for option one and option two, so they equal to the game dot replicate storage dot vote values folder and then dot option one and option two. Then down here we're using the on server event. On the add vote event to know once the remote event has been fired to the server. Then in brackets we have player and this equals to a player that like voted and option equals to either one or two depending on which one they voted for. So down here we're checking if the option equals to one and if it does then we're adding plus one to the option one value. Then else if the option equals to two then we're adding plus one to the option two value. Okay, so now we've closed off that script. Then we go inside the main script. So up top, we're making variables again, one for toggle vote event, which once again equals to game dot replicate storage dot remote events then dot toggle vote event. Then once again, we're making variables for both of the option values, so they equal to the game dot replicate storage dot vote values. Then dot option one or option two. Then we scroll down. So what we're doing is waiting eight seconds. Then after the wait, we're firing the toggle vote event to all the clients with true, and true equals to visible, so we're able to see the frame. Then we're giving them ten seconds to vote. So if you want, you can change this to as long as you want. Then after the ten seconds. We're firing the toggle vote event again to all the clients, but this time we're setting it to false. So false means that we can't see it. Then only that, we're using an if statement to check if the option one value is higher than the option two value. Then we're going to print in the output option one one. And if you want, you could do anything you want once a vote wins. Like for example, if you want to like destroy a base plate, we could do that. But for now, I'm just going to print. Then we're using an else if. So else if there are more option two votes than option one. Then we're going to print in the output option two one. Then once again, we're using else if. And this time we're going to be checking if both of the votes are the same amount. So if both votes are equal, then we're going to print tied vote in the output. So that's it for the main script. If we close it off, the only thing to do now is set reframe. So we use visible property to false. Then if we open the output and click play. So after a few seconds it should appear. There we go. And now we have 10 seconds to vote. I'm going to vote for option 1. You can see it updates it to number 1. Then with the output it says option 1 1. Now we click stop and try that again. There we go. Let's vote for option 2. Then the output, it prints option 2, 1. But then if we click stop, and this time if we vote for none, so both of the votes will be the same. So if you just don't vote for any, it should print out in the output tied vote. There we go, you can see tied vote in the output. And guys, that's a bit for this video. If this video helped, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe down below. In the description, you can check out my Robots group and Discord server, and I'll see you later.
Bye.